All right. We will now dive right into the next section. And this next section will justify that little detour we made when we were talking about determinants. I said that determinants have had kind of a fall from grace and don't really get focused on in most linear algebra classes, but they can't be totally ignored because they're used to present some major topics. And here we are with the major topic in question. Let's remind ourselves of a theorem. We've already seen this theorem before. But A is singular if and only if the determinant of A equals zero. And now I'm going to take this theorem and I am going to combine it with material we presented earlier in this lesson. Earlier in this lesson it was theorem lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if the matrix equation A minus lambda I times V equals zero has non-trivial solutions. And now, when students find linear algebra tricky, I think it's just because there's so much material that gets presented and seems unrelated, and then suddenly you're using that material. So back to the invertible matrix theorem. The invertible matrix theorem says that a matrix times a vector equals zero has non-trivial solutions if and only if that matrix has no inverse. That is to say, if and only if the matrix is not invertible. Which, now going back to that theorem I have written on the top of the frame, is true if and only if the determinant of A minus lambda I equals zero. And it is this equation that we are going to spend the rest of this lecture talking about. So we have a square matrix A and we're looking 
at the determinant of a minus lambda i. And you might object, but how can we look at the determinant of a minus lambda i? We don't know what lambda is. We don't know what the eigenvalues are. And that's kind of the point. The determinant of a minus lambda i is a polynomial in lambda. So the determinant of a minus lambda i is something like 2 lambda cubed minus lambda squared plus lambda minus 3. It's a polynomial that looks like this. And we've said that a, sorry, that lambda is an eigenvalue if and only if the determinant is zero. In other words, the eigenvalues are roots of a polynomial. That determinant is a polynomial in lambda, and lambda is an eigenvalue exactly when that polynomial equals zero. That is to say, as we have written on the whiteboard, the eigenvalues are the roots. So with this important observation made, let's turn this into a definition. The determinant of a minus lambda i is called the characteristic, characteristic polynomial of A. And the eigenvalues of A are the root of this characteristic polynomial. Am I contradicting myself? I said earlier in the day, earlier in the class, um, in a previous recording, I said that eigenvalues were difficult to find. Now I'm just saying that eigenvalues can be found by finding the roots of a polynomial. I mean, you can go to Desmos and you can make it find roots for you instantly. You can go to Wolfram Alpha or Mathematica or whatever computer algebra system you have, and it will find roots for you. 
but I'm not contradicting myself because before we do that, we have to find a determinant. And when I introduced determinants, one of the things I said was that finding them was incredibly slow and should be avoided if at all possible. Furthermore, although this isn't a numerical class, I will point out that the process of first finding the determinant, then finding the roots, is numerically unstable. That is to say that if you have a small amount of rounding error going in, you're going to have a lot more rounding error going out. So outside of a classroom where the matrices are very small and we can find determinants without a lot of fuss, this is not really a good way of finding eigenvalues. That doesn't mean that it's unimportant. For example, this definition and this statement that the eigenvalues are the roots immediately gives us the following theorem. Or I suppose not literally immediate. I'll state a lemma. First, if A is N by N, then the characteristic polynomial of A is an nth degree and the fact that the eigenvalues of A are there for the roots of an nth degree polynomial should give us some information. For example, We've already observed that any matrix has infinitely many eigenvectors. What about eigenvalues? Can a matrix have infinitely many eigenvalues? Bearing in mind that the eigenvalues are the roots of a finite degree polynomial. Can a matrix have infinitely many eigenvalues? What's the most roots that an nth degree polynomial could have? N. N. Thank you. So we get the following really nice theorem immediately an n by n matrix has a maximum of n eigenvalues. And we can get another major theorem from the fundamental theorem of algebra. Theorem 
every square matrix has at least one eigenvalue. And that eigenvalue might be a complex number, but that's okay. Um, eigenvalues being complex means something. It gives you useful information. I don't suppose you um, totally remember everything we did in differential equations, but those of you who have taken that class might remember that having complex eigenvalues is how we think, see things like spirals and circles when we're working with differential equations. So we're at the point in our mathematical career where we can no longer just sort of ignore re um, complex numbers and say we don't want to worry about that. Complex eigenvalues are significant. Real eigenvalues are significant. And we will talk about how they are significant you know, throughout the following um, class days. Does anybody have any questions so far? Then we should probably find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I mean, I've already indicated that this is rather artificial. In a lot of real world applications, we're dealing with thousands of rows and thousands of columns. And, and in that situation, you can't do anything working by hand. Be that as it may, an example like this is worthwhile because it will help nail down the definitions. So that's that A be this two by two matrix. So a small matrix. And we'll find the eigenvalues. And then for the eigenvalues that we'll find, we'll find the eigenvectors. So according to what we have written, to find the eigenvalues, we compute a determinant, and then we look at the roots of the resulting polynomial. In particular, the determinant Threw me off. This is not a theorem. This is an example. In particular, the determinant of a minus lambda i. Let's separate the solution from the problem and then let's proceed. 
So, A, once you've done like one or two examples, you will no longer need to write down all of these steps. But for our preliminary example, for our first example, we'll write down a minus lambda i. This subtraction has the result of introducing a negative lambda term to everything on the diagonal. The rest of A is left alone. And because this is a two by two matrix, we can find its determinant without a lot of drama. Multiply the diagonal and the anti-diagonal elements and subtract them. So, 1 minus lambda times negative 1 minus lambda minus 10. And there's the characteristic polynomial that we are going to set equal to zero. Um, let's proceed. I mean, we're going to, this is a quadratic. We can definitely set it equal to zero, but let's get this thing into a standard form first. So, negative lambda times negative lambda. Let me go over here so I'm not right at the very bottom of the board. Negative lambda times negative lambda is positive lambda squared. Let's see. 1 times negative lambda, so negative lambda. Negative 1 times negative lambda, so positive lambda. Negative 1 times positive 1, so negative 1 minus 10. This equals zero. And now we have a quadratic. It's equal to zero. We're spared from using the quadratic form to the, just because those linear terms cancel. Lambda squared minus 11 equals 0. Lambda equals plus or minus the square root of 11. And once you know lambda, it's at least hypothetically easy to find the eigenvectors. I say hypothetically because, of course, lambda is some ugly number in this case. It's an irrational number. But let's see what we can do with this ugly number or not. We're looking at the matrix 1, 5, 2, negative 1.
and let's look at lambda equals the square root of 11. We'll look at negative the square root of 11 in turn. So, saying that 11 or the square root of 11 is an eigenvalue, let's see, this might be erased already, but it's the same as saying that a minus lambda i times v equals zero has non-trivial solution. And those non-trivial solutions are what we want. Those non-trivial solutions are the eigenvectors. So, a minus lambda i, get used to working with this. We've already seen this expression once in this problem. A minus lambda i puts minus lambda terms into the diagonal, but otherwise it leaves A alone. So we're going to have a 1 minus the square root of 11 and a negative 1 minus the square root of 11. We're putting that negative lambda into the diagonal. Otherwise, we leave A alone. And we then want to solve this equation. And, of course, doing that by hand would hardly be pleasant. The upside of technology, our calculator doesn't really care that we have ugly looking decimals. If we give it the augmented matrix, it will perform Gauss-Jordan elimination for us. So that's go to this calculator and let's go to the matrix menu and let's see as i recall one minus the square root of 11 five was that zero what was here two, two. Two, the negative one minus the square root of 11, zero. Quit out. Perform that row reduction. And I mean, this is, there's no way to make this be nice looking. This really is an infinite non-repeating decimal. We can't turn it into a nice fraction or anything. Let's keep three decimal places. That tends to be my go-to when I don't have a better idea. So negative 2.158. Here's 
the equation from that first row. The second row says zero equals zero. That's not useful information. Again, if we if we were kind of foggy about how to do this parametric stuff and how to buffer equations and so on, we need to get that down. We're going to use it constantly. The second equation was zero equals zero. That's useless. It tells us nothing. We're replacing it with y equals y, which you could argue also tells us nothing. But we can use that new equation to get this thing in parametric form. And every value of y gives you an eigenvalue except for y equals zero. Again, because zero is not an eigenvector. Might have said eigenvalue just now. What I meant to say, every value of y gives you an eigenvector except for zero. And I guess with two minutes left, we're not going to be uh, not going to be doing negative eleven, but it's the same deal. If you subtract a negative, you get a positive. So you'd have addition down the diagonal. Then you'd go to your calculator, perform the row reduction, and get your answer. Okay, we will um, hopefully, I mean in some form, we will continue this on Thursday, depending on whether the court decides they want me in a jury box. Um, if that happens, I'll post an announcement and there will be videos for you to look at.